Let heaven hear your voice. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Talk to your maker, talk to your father, Jesus. Talk to your father. The presence of God is mighty in this place. Talk to your father. Blow my mind, Lord. Masi kadi yamo shi kadi prada kosi. Talk to your father. He's madly in love with you. He cares for you more than you care for yourself. Talk to your father. The one that will leave the 99 behind to look for the one. Talk to your father. He says, as simple as ask, you shall receive. Seek, you will find. Knock. The door will be opened unto you. I didn't come here this morning to see a man. I came to meet with my maker, my father, my lover. Bodings are lifted at Calvary. Bodings are lifted at Calvary. Come unto me, only the labor and the heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I will give you rest. The shame is much. The shame is much. The pain is much. The disappointment is real. But God is more real than all of them. His presence, his power is greater than all. Talk to your father. I am running out of time. I am running out of time. Say someone. Iyamo si kada boro si kada haya ni mo eka dene ni mo zukopa lakato skipa sha lakato batu siya lakato siya naka iya nakabo tika dono siya akabo shatika receive the embrace of your father. Receive the embrace of your father. He says, I will not leave you comfortless. I am sending the Holy Ghost. Is the comforter, the paraclet. The comforter is in the house. The one that dries tears is in the house. As many as turn to him, he will in no wise cast out. Blow my mind, Lord. Blow my mind, Lord. What God cannot do does not exist. Blow my mind, Lord. Ah, 
Jesus. No one can pray for you like you pray for yourself. Talk to your father. for coming to church. God has to hear my voice. God has to hear my voice. 53 days to the end of the year. God needs to hear my voice. 53 days. I have waited for 10 years. I've waited for 12 years. I've waited for 15 years. I've waited for 5 months. Lord, will you not hear my voice this morning? Hey, Shati Baka. Bakati ya nama shata. Kanama likaba tusuya. Father, shall this be the day I will cry last about this matter? Can this be the last encounter over this matter? That I may move on to the next Lord. Shadabakusa yada. Shanakaba tusuya. Shanakati saya. Jesus, 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 Answers are raining already. Answers are raining already. Answers are raining already. Answers are raining already. I beg you, please don't be a spectator. Shadi Bokosi Kati Yadaba. Kanimo Shakoti Kadavara. This is not for everyone, but if you feel tired, come to the altar. If there's any matter that has made you feel tired, come to the altar. It's not for everybody, but there are issues that you're tired of. I am tired. I can't take any other step over this matter, except the Lord carries me. Oh! My brother, can you just pour it out to the Lord? Be real, be real. Don't package your prayer. Don't package your prayer. Don't package 
manage your prayer. Just tell it the way you are feeling. Pour it that way. He's not afraid of your feelings. He's not afraid of your feelings. If you are hot and bitter, pour it to him that way. He's not afraid. He's not, he's not afraid of your feelings. Mashakani Malikopasa. Shikopa Ruti Yamaha. Hannah said, Hannah said, I am not drunk. I am a woman with a heavy heart. I am a woman with a heavy heart. That is why my lips can move. But there is, there is no voice coming out. Shakata Parosa. I come. I come in the office of a prophet. And as Eli spoke to Hannah, God did not come to massage your emotions. God came to give you a solution. God came to give you an answer. You came today for an answer because it will still happen. It is happening today. Answers are ready. 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 Shakuta yaba. Lekata yaba. You shall not go back without an answer. You shall not go back without a result. You shall not go back without a solution. You shall not go back without a change. You shall not go back without a newness. It shall not happen. Right now, I stand in the office of a prophet and I declare your answers have come. 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 Shut up, Baba Baba. Shut up, Baba Baba. Kadabarosikopa. Kadibosaba, hear me today. I connect to the grace of God upon our Papa. I connect to the grace that flows upon this altar of fire. As your rain shall thunder, the thing that brought you out, uh, as you are returning, uh, you are returning to a testimony. Uh, you are returning to a testimony. Uh, you are going back to meet a testimony. Uh, let God be true. Uh, and every man a liar. Don't say the Lord. Uh, it will still happen. Uh, it will still happen. Uh, as you go back to your seat, uh, carry your results. Uh, carry your answers. Uh, carry your results. Uh, carry your answers. Uh, what you cried about, uh, you shall laugh about. Uh, what you cried about, uh, you shall rejoice about. Uh, let your amen turn. Uh. And today we address every altar, every force that has insisted that this situation shall remain. If they have begun upon this altar of fire, while your amen shall turn, even before the end of today, we announce that particular force, man of spirit, as your amen shall turn, we announce they are scattered by fire, scattered by fire, scattered by fire, scattered by fire. They shall not rise again. They shall not rise again. They shall not rise again. The body is gone. In place of the bodies, carry your testimonies. In the name of Jesus. As you stand to return to your seat, just keep declaring, it has happened. Oh, I wish we say it with revelation shout, it has happened. Thank you, Father. Please run with me.
all I ask is don't hold your testimony and return all the glory to God. Turn with me to Genesis chapter 17, verse 15 to 21. Genesis chapter 17, verse 15 to 21. And while you are that, please help me celebrate our papa. My papa, your papa. Please, can you add a shout to the clap? Let me celebrate God's choices, servant in our generation. We are not celebrating him sufficiently. We're not celebrating him sufficiently. Papa will love you. I don't take this, this rare honor for granted, this rare privilege. Thank you. I stand upon your grace, the grace the Lord has poured lavishly upon you. And today shall be a reflection of that which God has already done in your life. I celebrate the grace you carry, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you for all you've done in our generation. And thank you for you for not relenting. Thank you, sir. Please let me celebrate our mama. Let me celebrate our mama. Mama, thank you. Thank you for the numerous things you've done and you're still doing. We love you. And we can't love you any less. Genesis chapter 17, 15 to 22. Apparently, I don't have any time left. Um, can we read together? I want to go. And God said unto Abraham, As of Sarah thy wife, thou shalt not call her name Sarai. For Sarah shall be her name. Sorry, I think I'm reading upside down. But Sarah shall her name be. Can we continue? And I will bless her and give thee a son also of her. Yea, I will bless her. I shall be a mother of nations. King of people shall be of her. Then Abraham fell upon his face and laughed and said, Lizard, shall a child be born unto him that is a hundred years old? Please, can we ask that question again? Want to go? Shall a child be born unto him that is a hundred years old? Again, shall a child be born unto him? Again, shall a child be born unto him that is a hundred years old? Continue. And shall Sarah that is ninety years old bear? And Abraham said unto God, Oh, that Ishmael might live before thee. And God said, Sarah thy wife shall bear thee a son indeed. And I shall call his name Isaac. And I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant. And with his seed after him. And as for Ishmael, I have heard him. Behold, I have blessed him. I will make him fruitful. I will multiply him exceedingly. Twelve princes shall he beget. And I will make him a great nation. For my covenant will I establish with Isaac. Which Sarah shall appear unto thee at this set time in the next year. And they left off talking with him. And God wept up before Abraham. Father, we thank you. We cry to you in the next few minutes, Lord. Unveil your mind to us. Possess these lips of clay and possess the hearts. Let there be an unbroken communication and unbroken understanding. Let someone be set free. Let us enter into what you will do for us. In Jesus' name. And while you are sitting, please help me celebrate the pastors. While you take your seat, help me celebrate the pastors. Celebrate the admin, the, the elders, the leaders. We are not celebrating ourselves this morning intentionally. I don't know whether. And let me celebrate yourself. Let me celebrate yourself. Help me turn to your neighbor. Say, neighbor, it will still happen. You said it because I asked you to say it, but I want you to see God doing what you have called impossible. Help me turn to one another and say, neighbor, it will still happen. Ask your neighbor, where will it happen? What is your neighbor saying? What is your neighbor saying? Lift up your hand and say, Lord, I came today for it to happen. Say, Lord, I came today for it to happen. Say, Lord, I do not postpone. I do not adjourn my miracle. Say, Lord, I have come for my miracle. If you have come for your miracle, let your amen be the loudest. Yeah. Ooh. Thank you, Jesus. Number one, I want to say that this is the first place in the Bible that God gave Abraham a time frame within which what he said will happen will happen. Until this point, God never gave him a time frame. God, go and read it. 
He just kept telling him, you will have a child. You will have a child. He said, I will have a child. And that was all. But for the first time, God came to Abraham and told him, by this set time, next year. Father, reduce my general promise to a specific promise. I need a time frame, Lord. I'm not speaking to everybody. Listen, I know there are those of us that are, that are comfortable. God will make me rich one day. God will give me carry a child one day. But there is a place that God begins to give a time frame. There's a place that God begins to say, by this time in October 2023, you will be in New York with a thriving business, happily married, and with a baby in your hands. Listen, I don't want to dwell in that realm where I am moving with a nebulous promise of God. I want to come to that point where God tells me, listen, it is possible. Tell everybody it's possible. Say it is possible. Listen, it wasn't Abraham, and this is this is the part that, that even makes me go crazy about this. It wasn't Abraham that started praying. The Bible says God came to Abraham. Abraham had already laid altars here and there. Listen, this is why we say be on the altar of fire every day. Let there be an existing culture of altars in your life. Because the day God will respond to that altar, he will not give you a notice. He will just show up and say, okay, I have been in a walk with you as, as early as um, Genesis chapter 12. He said, Abraham, walk you before me and be blameless. And in Genesis chapter 17, he comes to Abraham after so many years of appearing not to have a direction. I say, Abraham, by this time next year, you are about to have a child. Can I speak to anybody that has an altar, a thriving altar? Your altar, your altar shall attract specific promises. I am not speaking to everybody. The altar you maintain, let it attract for you. Time bound promises. Time bound promises. Time bound promises. I wish your amen were louder. I wish your amen were louder. Why am I emphasizing on this? If God gives you a time, God. God will give to his time. If God gives you a time, God will give to his time. The problem is that promise does not have a time frame. Jesus was so conscious of this. He kept telling them, on the third day, I will rise. On the third day, go and read the Bible. There is no way it is written in the Bible that Jesus will rise on the third day. No way. The closest to it is where he said, and on the third day we shall be revived. I was talking about something else. It's not a messianic statement. But Jesus shows up and begins to say, on the third day, I will rise. I am a Shikaba. Can I pray for you again? I know you have general promises, but may you receive a promise from God that has a time frame. And Abraham asked a very important question. Shall a child be born unto him that's a hundred years old? Shall a child be born unto him that's 100 years old? Has it ever happened? Will it ever happen? Is there a record of such? Abraham. Remove Abraham's name. Put your name. Tell yourself, whatever God says, tell yourself, say, Ugo, whatever God says that will happen has happened before. Uh, and I, I, I just want to illustrate it and I'll go back to my seat. Let's go to Genesis chapter 5. I think that's where we see a lot of this. Verse 3 says, And Adam lived 130 years old and begat a son in his likeness after his image and called his name Seth. Can I have one person from the choir? Please be fast. Where is 130 here? If you don't see 130, don't hold your response. Just see if you can see 130. Seth lived 105 years and began to answer. One person, please. Please be fast. 105, pick 105. And stand after the 130. If you didn't see the 130, Enos lived 90 years and begat Canaan. Can someone comfort? Canaan lived 70 years and begat Mahalel. Can someone comfort? 
Find 70. Find. Gerard lived 106 years and begat Enoch. Someone find it. They come in this way, just increasing the number. Methuselah lived uh, 80 and 7 years and began Lamech. They increase the number. Find 8 and 7. That's 87. Lamech lived 108 and 2 years and begat a son. I don't know the name of the son. Find 102 years. Noah. No, no, Noah's own. They didn't tell us the age. He was going to date. The Bible just says Noah was 700 years old. And Noah begat Shem, Ham, and Japheth. So we don't know. So let's remove him. Genesis chapter 11, verse 10. These are the generations of Shem. Shem is the great, great, great grandfather of Abraham. Shem was a hundred years old and begat as far. Lift it. Who is, who is Shem? Who is coming up as Shem here? Which one is your own? Who has 100? Who has 100? Someone was 100. Shem, 100. Go this way. No, no, you stay here. I want you to lift them. Let everybody see them. I want mathematicians to do an average of these numbers. Let's get the average age that this kid was given. Thanks. Someone help me do a mathematics. Those are the mathematicians. What was the average age? You know what mean? Mean. How to derive a mean, right? If you were in primary school, you were taught how to derive a mean. <laughs> I learned that one. I didn't, I didn't learn great pattern, but I learned that one. How to derive a mean. What is the mean age for these people to be giving birth? What was the equation that Abraham asked? What was the question Abraham asked? What was the question Abraham asked? Abraham, as can a hundred-year-old man give birth to a child? But on the average, just some years ago, if you are not hundred, you will not have a child. You need to be hundred and above. And it is the same God now. I, 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 let me now show you why Abraham was confused. Genesis chapter 11. Everybody that gave birth to children at the age of 30, 29, 30, 29, 30. The same God that made these ones to give birth to children at 100 and above was the same God that came to Abraham and said, Abraham, you are in a generation where they give birth to children at 30, but you will give birth at 100. And Abraham said, around my environment, it does not happen. Based on what I have seen, it is not possible. But God says, I am the same God yesterday, today, and forever. I am the God when people were giving birth to children at above 100. And I am still God in this generation people are giving birth to children at 30. And I am telling you that I, God, I am the one, oh, I am the one that's telling you at the age of 100, though you are in a generation of 30, you are going to have a child. Abraham says, ah, how can that be? It's not possible. Please, I've come to inform you that the Bible says something very, very interesting in Matthew. It says, Matthew 13, 52. It says, they say unto them, therefore every scrap which is strong into the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man as a householder, which bringeth forth out of his treasures things new and old. Things new and old. Hear me. God sent me to tell you that if it means waking up with an old method, if it means bringing, pot, bringing back a method that has stopped working, for you to carry what he said you will carry, God said, I will resurrect it. God sent me to tell you that even if in your generation, in your environment, uh, the circumstances have changed, uh, the results have changed, uh, hear me as I hear the Lord, uh, the same God of the hundreds uh, is the God of the days of the 30s. Uh, it will still happen. 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 I know that the way things are happening now, this is not the way it works. There was a time it worked that way. 
you have the record. That was the time it walked away. Maybe you don't even know, but I've come to tell you that God says, I am resurrecting metals that no more work in order to use it to work for you. I am speaking to you concerning systems and structures. Maybe there are things that are happening right now. They say if you don't have money, you cannot get it. But some years back, you didn't, you didn't need money to get it. God said, because of you, because I made a promise, I am bringing back the days where you don't need money to get that thing you're looking for. I'm not speaking to everybody. God said, I should tell you, let you know, I have power to give children at the age of 100. At the same time, uh, at the age of 30, uh, and I do it the way I want to do it. It will still happen. It, no, 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 no. Why am I showing you this? The next chapter, when, I, when Sarah laughed, God said, this laughter is too, is too big. Abraham, you laughed or oh, I didn't talk. Sarah, you have also come to laugh. He now asked the question, is there anything to her? For the Lord to do. Listen, why is he asking that question? That thing you're thinking the Lord cannot do, he has done it before. Your case is not peculiar. No, that is the lie of the devil. That's why the Bible says there is no temptation that has befallen us. That is not common to man. But with it, he shall give us a way of escape. That thing you think has never happened for anybody. I want to shock you. It has happened for someone before. And God said, I am making reference to what happened before. I'm about to do a new thing for you. I'm about to make it happen for you. I'm not speaking to everybody. But there are men and women here who understand that it will still happen. If you are one of them, let your amen be the loudest. But this is the rider. God said, when I told Abraham, I will make it happen. Abraham turned his attention from me, the promise giver, to the promise receiver. Oh God, Abraham, you're not the one that said you will have a child at 100. Why are you looking at yourself? Why? Why are you looking at yourself? Why are you looking at yourself? And when you look at yourself, you say it cannot happen. Why? My brother, my sister, you stop looking at yourself. That's the word I came to give to you today. If everything I say you didn't hear anything else, stop looking at yourself. You are not the promise giver. You didn't make the promise. You are just a receiver. The best you can do is to say, Lord, I am the servant. Be it unto me according to your word. That is all. That's the best you can do. And the devil knows. The devil knows that since he cannot stop what God has promised, he can stop you from expecting and receiving it. And so he makes you to focus on yourself and disqualify yourself by what you have seen that you cannot do. But the focus is not on you. The Bible says, and Moses said, look and live. Look and live. Look and live. Look and live. And it shall be lifted up. As the song says, I will draw all men. It shall be lifted up. Look and live. The Bible says, they turned to him and their face were not ashamed. Their face was brightened. Streams of joy. Stop looking at yourself. Look and live. Stand on your feet. Thank you. Someone say, Lord, I turn to you. That's all I came for this morning. I have looked at myself for too long and I've concluded it cannot still happen. But this morning I'm turning to you. My eyes are on you. My eyes are on you. My eyes are on you. Talk to your father. Listen, you see, I, I, I keep saying, when you come to church, please don't package your prayer. God, based on this and this and this and this, I have seen, it cannot happen. But I turn to you. My eyes have shifted to you. My eyes have shifted to you. My eyes have shifted to you. Jesus said, if the eye 
He said, the eye is the light of the body. If the eye be single, the body shall be full of light. Lord, I turn to you. I am not specific on any matter, but you know the matters that you have concluded based on your current situation. It cannot happen. Based on the things you're seeing, it cannot happen. Based on yourself, it cannot happen. But please, Lord, today I turn to you. My focus is on you. I am only a receiver, I'm not the doer. You are the doer. Help me, Father. And as many as they are turning their eyes on the Lord, oh yes, I hear the Lord. If it means opening up old systems that have closed down, if it means organizing things in a way that was working before that stopped working, whatever it will cost God, because God said it will still happen, as you step into this week, that which the Lord has spoken to you, as your remain shall thunder, you shall walk into it as a miracle. You shall carry it as a miracle. I wish your amen will come in with conviction. I wish your amen will come in with conviction. Hear me as I hear the Lord. This week, God shall do it for you. This week, God will do it for you. This week, God will do it for you. Let your amen thunder. You will be one born out of season. Oh, so I said, like one that was born out of season. I don't care what the season is. That thing that God says will happen. As your remain shall turn down this week, it is happening for you. In the name of Jesus. Father, we are no more looking at the wind. We are no more observing the weather. What you cannot do does not exist. We receive what you promised us in the name 